This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Screencasts Online, your source for new Mac and iOS tutorials every week. To learn more and for a 14-day free trial, visit screencastsonline.com. And by Mac Voices Magazine, our free Flipboard magazine that brings you some of the best Mac, iPhone, and iPad productivity tips on the web. High in signal, low in noise, just like Mac Voices, Mac Voices Magazine includes information on how you can get more out of your Apple technology. Subscribe at macvoices.com slash magazine or search for Mac Voices Magazine on Flipboard. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have Mark Fuccio back with us. We're going to do a live setup of a Drobo and Drobo Access. We've had a number of people write in and, and ask about this and wanted to see it. And so I thought, hey, why not? I asked Mark if he would be willing to do it. And so, Mark, you're here. Thank you so much for doing this for us. I really appreciate it. Chuck, it's good to be here. I'm, I'm glad you're responsive to uh, your viewers. And I'm intrigued uh, by some of their questions because I think that, uh, you know, we, in the pre-show, we had version problems with Skype and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I bet you will be setting up the Drobo faster than it took us to download and reinstall and reconfigure Skype. So I'm not taking that. I'm not taking that bet, Mark. I'll lose. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm I'm a little embarrassed. When you were here before to talk about Drobo Access, I don't know why neither one of us thought about doing a, a quick little screen capture, screen share thing, so that folks could actually see how easy it is. But we're going to rectify this uh, right now. This will be kind of a short and sweet show, but it it really is as easy as Mark's going to going to make it. So, Mark, if, first of all, tell us what we're going to be looking at um, as far as what hardware you are, are using for this. Okay, so um, I'm broadcasting from an iMac that's running El Cap, and uh, the Drobo I'm using is Drobo 5N, which is 5-bay Drobo. Uh, when it goes on screen, you'll say I only have two drives inserted in it. Uh, I set it up uh, just before the show, just uh, for demonstration purposes here. So uh, we did nothing special. Uh, it, uh, you know, for people who set up Drobo for the first time, you know, after you uh, update uh, firmware, which uh, may be necessary depending on timing of when you get the uh, 5N, uh, it takes about 20 minutes for it to format itself as a humongous 64 terabyte uh, drive. Uh, and then after that, uh, you're ready to go. So the only other thing I've done is while we were waiting here and going through Skype, um, I've downloaded some of the Drobo apps, which uh, I'll point to once uh, once we begin a screencast instead of just looking at each other and you know sharing our charm and good looks. <laughs> You're following yourself tonight, aren't you? Um, okay, that's good. So so that way folks have an idea of what it is they're going to be seeing. And of course, we're going to be looking at the Drobo dashboard software um, as much as anything. So. With that, I think it's time to uh, to have a look at your desktop and what's going on. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the Drobo dashboard. You can see here we have a Drobo 5N. And as I mentioned, you know, it's got two drives in it, a three and a two terabyte drive. The key thing you need to do is uh, first go in and uh, you set up some shares. So I set up a share called My Files. I add a user, that's myself. And, you know, I, I gave myself you know, permission to uh, access uh, sh files in that share. You know, as you're doing that, you could set it up for doing time machine backup or sharing with other people. Uh, very, very easy. Next thing you need to do is on Drobo settings uh, under admin, you want to go down here, you know, click this option to enable Drobo apps. That's necessary because you need to download to the My Drobo and Drobo Access in order to share it. Uh, also here, set up a user name for the admin user and a password. Uh, here, do practice good password hygiene and policy because this Drobo will be exposed to the internet. And if you use the world's worst password, which is either password or 1234, and there's this vigorous debate about which of those is worse, uh, you're not going to have any privacy at all. So uh, make sure you use something that uh, is strong lots of characters to make it uh, very difficult to crack. Once you do that, you go into Drobo apps. And what this will do is this will download a listing of Drobo apps uh, that are available. The two we're going to talk about today are at the top. It's My Drobo and Drobo Access. 
But you know, as you see, uh, you know, going down, there are all sorts of uh, other apps that uh, are available. You know, some of these are for developers. Some of these are other media sharing and other tools. Uh, some of the ones that I'm told are quite popular are, you know, Transmission. This is a BitTorrent client that uh, people use for, you know, downloading files from uh, the far reaches of the internet. So, uh, with that, uh, first thing we do is once it's uh, once it's installed, uh, if you click underneath this region here, you can see a little button, configure. So we click on configure. Mark, if you don't mind, I'm going to stop you there just right quick. Um, it it shows the applications are running now. Did you did they automatically start because you downloaded them, or did you turn turn them on at some previous time? Uh, when I downloaded it, it turned them on. Got it. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so the first thing that happens is you know you need to make sure that your Drobo is registered with user support. So uh, I'll go uh, register that and then we will be back. So we're back from registering the Drobo. I click configure for Drobo access, brings up uh, this panel. And what it's going to ask me to do is register an account. This is how it will be known uh, on uh, the internet. So we go in here, select Drobo access, and then select register app. And you will be known by whatever you set up here as a subdomain. It could be Hey You or Mark or Chuck. I'm just going to use my initials and make it uh, mtf.mydrobo.com. And then I'm going to click Register. And depending on uh, the load on uh, you know, a couple of servers, uh, what this is doing in the background is this is registering a new domain, you know, mtf.mydrobo.com and is also going to go out and get a 2048-bit SSL security certificate for that domain. With the combination of the two, all of your data sharing is going to be encrypted end-to-end. -end. So, Mark, while this is doing it, could you elaborate a little bit on what you mean it's going out and registering that domain? You mean like it's like a, a domain registrar? Yes, we're working with the domain registrar, and we're creating a subdomain. The, sub, the domain mydrobo.com you know, exists, and when you register an endpoint, you know, in this case mtf.mydrobo.com, you're entering into the worldwide domain system, uh, you know, that uh, domain name. So this allows you to jump on an airplane and go across country or go to Europe or Asia, open a browser and type in uh, mtf.mydrobo.com and it will present you with a login page so that you're asked to be able to share your files. We'll see a little bit of that uh, later on uh, before we go. Okay. And, and if you would, just talk a little bit about the, the SSL certificate as well. One of the innovations of uh, you know, MyDrobo is that it will automatically get a 2048, a 2K-bit uh, SSL certificate. Um, this is unique to you, to your domain name. So this guarantees that uh, any data that uh, you share you know, from a remote location, or even if you shared it in the next room in your home, anything you're doing to go to uh, mtf.mydrobo.com is going to be encrypted. As it leaves your Drobo, it's encrypted using that key. When it gets downloaded and accessed by the browser uh, or the app on uh, your iOS or Android device, uh, that data stream is decrypted for your use. You know, anybody in between, it's going to be encrypted and it'll just look like random noise. Now, we've talked about SSL certificates here on Mac Voices before, and one of the things I know about them, and I think a lot of people do, is that they expire. Um, how often does this get renewed? Is it something that the user has to do, or does it happen automatically? That's a great question. Drobo will do it, uh, will handle the renewals automatically. Yeah, I, I believe they do it at uh, either a 90 or 120 day uh, interval. So, the benefit of that is there's frequent key rotation. You know, again, it's another you know, good security step. Uh, it's completely automated uh, for people. Um, by going out, if you were to go out and you know, shop around you know, to get an SSL certificate, you'd be spending anywhere from you know thirty-five to a hundred dollars 
uh, depending on the type of certificate that you buy. And that, that renewal process is completely transparent to the user? It's transparent to the user. It's something that Drobo does you know, as part of uh, its uh, self-management uh, process in the background. Okay, so we've cut the video. The longest process uh, in setting this up is entering uh, into the uh, worldwide domain, the in this case, mtf.mydrobo.com. That took uh, us about uh, five minutes, but when you're done, we're back here. You see on the screen, everything is fine. You can see it says uh, everything is okay. So what I've done also is you know, in a browser, I've typed uh, my uh, URL, https colon slash slash mtf.mydrobo.com. It asks me for a username. I'm just using admin. That's the username I set up to manage the Drobo device. Uh, if you set up different user accounts, uh, you could use those passwords uh, as well. You know, sorry, those username and password pairs as well. I'm just going to enter my password. You know, click the button and enter it. And I'm not going to save it into my password at the moment. And then when it comes up, you get a screen. The first time you are there, you get uh, this welcome note just to give you a reminder that there are apps in the Android uh, Google Play or the Apple App Store. Uh, costs you a whopping 99 cents. Uh, so you can get use of a dedicated app to share files. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can log into the browser like we've seen. And here's the My Drobo uh, system. We can see we have. Uh, you know, my files, that's the folder I just uh, created. There's nothing in there. So um, let me, um, let me uh, access that on the Drobo dashboard. Uh, we go to shares, we have my files, oops. So you know, we'll go back, we'll say we'll access it on the Drobo dashboard. We go to My Files. And Drobo will automatically mount it. You can see here's a little Drobo icon on the top. I will, you know, click and I'll open that. Uh, I will add, you know, we took a screenshot, you will add that in. And if we go, just go back to, uh, you know, Drobo you know, Access, you do a refresh of the screen. And we'll see there's the screenshot image that I took in. You know, a couple things here, if you want to share this little fork, this is a sort of a universal symbol for a link. You know, if you click on that, it gives you the capability here. If you want to share a link, you click on it. You know, it will create a unique link here. So if you copy this and email it to somebody, they can download that file. If you want to password protect it, like maybe you want to send something to your tax uh, accountant, you can put a password you know, on it. You can also set an expiration date. Other things you can do is you can share folders. So my files, if I share a link with somebody, you know, if I click allow editing, I can send this link to somebody and what they will be able to do is they'll see the contents in the folder. They can download files, you know, maybe if Chuck and I were collaborating on a script or something, uh, he might download it, make a revision, and drag it and just send it back to me. He could drag back you know, into this screen area, and then uh, the system will go. Let me take a look and uh, show an example of one thing I like and think is particularly useful, and that is you know, if you overlap, you know, files, you know, it will tell you, hey, dummy, you already have a file by that name. Do you want to create a new file name? Do you want to overwrite to the existing file? So 
built-in protection against uh, human error and colliding and crashing versions. So it's not exactly a versioning system, but it does prevent you from overwriting the file. Well, it's versioning in the sense that it will create a unique separate file for it. And you could create a, a version like R1, R2, R3, or you could give it an entirely new different file name. Excellent. So that's pretty much all there is to it. And that means that once I do this, I can have the full capacity of my 5N on the cloud available to me through a web browser or through the dedicated apps up to the 64, uh, ter yeah, 64 terabytes. Right. I mean, it will take a while. Drive sizes will have to increase to about like 10 terabytes, which are which are right on the verge of in order to get to, well, no, more than that, you know, to get, you know, with... Um, with a Drobo with four drives, 64, you need drive 16 terabytes in size before the Drobo will hit its maximum uh, capacity. Uh, and then you can, it can continue to grow and will present itself as two, two different uh, Drobo volumes. So this is part of the key idea here is, you know, your data is safe forever and it can continue to grow as your collection of stuff continues to increase. Right. And I mean, at the risk of sounding like an advertisement for Drobo, that's one of the key points is that as, as you get more stuff and as that the available drives get bigger, you can just keep swapping out larger drives, your data copies over and replicates itself and, and it's all good. It is. I'm at the point of uh, having, thinking about upgrading from six terabyte to either to eight terabytes, although 10 terabytes are starting to you know, become available, and if I could wait, if I can wait, which I probably can for a year for them to drop in price, I'll, I'll probably just uh, you know do a mammoth upgrade uh, at that time. But uh, that's the nature of storage; it just you know, the drives continue to get bigger and lower priced, and and we just keep on gathering stuff up. I'm. As, as you know, I'm I'm terrible about that. You just don't want to when when, when storage is that cheap, you don't want to throw anything away. That's right. You don't need to. And some of the f best photographers I know say they never throw anything away because they either you don't know what's going to be important or you don't know what tools get invented that will allow you to use uh, part of an image uh, in, can you know, in combination with other things on the shoot you know, to make that really super you know, award-winning picture. Wow, that's a whole different topic. That that we'll have to get some photographers in here to talk about. That's a that's a, an excellent, interesting point. I know, in in a, on a on a uh, an amazingly smaller scale, I know there are times that we've taken events, uh, pictures of events at the office, and you keep all the photos around because you just never know when you're looking for that one face or that one angle or that one combination of people, and right. if if you look hard enough, it's there and you can find it. Well, now with, uh, just to close, now with uh, Drobo Access, you could create a separate folder for the Christmas party or the 4th of July party or Memorial Day party, um, and then send everybody a link to it so that, uh, you know, they can, uh, they can look and they can download the file, sorry, the photos that they find are most interesting. Very. So um, I, was, I was glad to be here. I think just, we saw just, you know, a couple stages, you know, step number one, you need to download and install the apps. Number two, you configure it, you know, there. You go in and select your subdomain. That's the most time-consuming part of the process. Uh, after that, uh, you can go in and uh, gain access uh, you know, through your username and password. And uh, there's other options and things there. I think it's intuitive. Uh, you know, I think it's a sort of very much a Dropbox-like experience. So if people know how to share files with uh, Dropbox or the Dropbox web interface, I think they'll find uh, you know, the Drobo access to be uh, very familiar. Mark, it's always a pleasure. Really appreciate you showing showing us this. And again, we got to think about doing this more often when Drobo comes out with new capabilities, so folks can see how easy it is to set up and really understand what's going on. Sure, I look forward to that. This will be certainly shorter than any of the Mac Jury or some of your other traditional uh, interview-based shows. Well, short and sweet, right? I hope so. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Bye bye. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Go check out Drobo Share. Obviously, go check out Drobo at, at drobo.com and drobostore.com. Um, I, I say it every time the subject of Drobo comes up, but I have never lost any data on a Drobo. And that's why I want you to pay attention to it. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. 
visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.